This is a practice exercise from page 222 in the textbook dealing with orbital notation, so using quantum numbers to define orbitals that we find electrons in. This first question asks us for the subshell with n equals 5 and l equals 1. So you should remember that the n number tells us the energy level. So we know we are in the fifth energy level. L equals 1 tells us what type of orbital we have, or the shape. So since we know we are in the fifth energy level, that means it's going to be a 5 something. And when L equals 1, we're always talking about P orbitals. So this is going to be a 5P orbital. Part B says how many orbitals are in this subshell? Well, there are three different types of p orbitals. There's the 5px, the 5py, and the 5pz. And those x, y, and z designations just tell us their orientation in space. Our if they're oriented on the x-axis, the y-axis, or the z-axis. Remember again that our p orbitals look like peanuts. They've got two lobes, so that's your x, that's your y, and then your z would be coming in and out of the page. Okay, the next part of this question asks us for the m sub l values. n sub l's tell you the orientation in space. And the values of m sub l are derived from the values of l. So m sub l is always equal to plus or minus l and anything in between. So if l is 1, that means that minus l is minus 1, and plus l is positive 1. And the only thing in between there that's an integer is 0, so those are your three values of m sub l. Negative 1, 0, and positive 1. Just to make sure we really understand what's going on with these problems, I'm going to go ahead and generate a good chunk of that orbital table so we can practice understanding these. So the first column is going to be my n value, then I'm going to have my l value, then my m sub l, and then we're going to talk about what type of orbital this is. And we'll keep looking at subshells and so on. So let's start with the smallest possible value of n. The smallest value that we can have for n is 1. So that's our lowest possible energy level. So when n equals 1, the only possible value for l is 0. Because remember that l is equal to n minus 1. The only value for m sub l is also 0. Because m sub l is equal to plus or minus l. So if l is equal to 0, the only value for m sub l is also 0. This would be a 1s orbital. Okay, what if n is equal to 2? If n is equal to 2, then I have more options. If n is equal to 2, then my values for l could either be 0 or 1. So remember that l is integer values from 0 to n equals 1. Well, if l is 0, m sub l is still 0. But now I'm talking about a 2s orbital because it's in the second energy level. If L is 1, m sub L can be minus 1, 0, or positive 1. And now I'm dealing with the 2p orbitals. It makes sense that there are three designations for m sub L because there are three different orientations of p orbitals. So next thing I'm going to look at, I'm just going to keep going up. What happens if n equals 3? Well, when n equals 3, L could be 0, it could be 1, or it could be 2. When L is 0, M sub L is still always 0, which means that I must be talking about the 3s orbital. When L is 1, M sub L is negative 1, 0, positive 1, so now I must be talking about the 3p orbitals. And when L is 2, M sub L is going to be negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, or 2. So 
five possible values for m sub l means five orbitals, and I know it is the d that has five orbitals. So if you look at this chart that we've generated, you should be noticing that every single s orbital has the same value for l and m sub l. So when l is zero, m sub l is zero, I'm always talking about an s orbital. When l equals one, I'm always talking about a p orbital, because if l equals 1, there are three values for m sub l, which means I'm discussing p orbitals. Again, when l equals 1, I'm talking about p orbitals, because there's three different values for m sub l. So you should start to figure out the patterns, and that you can see for the first energy level, I only have one subshell. For the second energy level, I have two subshells. For the third energy level, I have three subshells. And we should also be able to figure out how many electrons are going in there. So if I've only got one subshell and it's a 2s, I can only put two electrons in there. If I've got two subshells and it's a 2s and a 2p, that 2s can hold two electrons, the 2p can hold six electrons. So I'm looking at eight total electrons. For the three subshells, 2s can hold two electrons, 3p can hold six electrons, and the 3d can hold 10 electrons. So now I'm looking at 18 total electrons in that third energy level. So this starts to fit with the columns that we're seeing on the periodic table. So again, the periodic table is gonna help us figure out what's going on with the orbitals and help us with the electron configurations. And the reason that I can figure out how many electrons go in each orbital is that I know that each orbital can hold a maximum of two. So if I've only got one kind of orbital, I could only hold two electrons. If I have three kinds of orbitals, I can put two in here, two in here, two in here for a total of six. Two electrons in here, two, two, two and two, total of six, two, 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 total of ten. So this is how we figure out the number of electrons that can fit in each of these subshells. Remembering that our subshells are degenerate, which means all of our subshells have the same energy value. So any electron in a 3d orbital, any one of these orbitals, is going to have the same energy because those orbitals are degenerate. Again, you want to make sure you clearly understand what each of these quantum numbers tells you. N tells you the energy level. L tells you the shape of the orbital, tells you if you've got an s orbital when it's zero, tells you if you've got a p orbital when it's one, or a d orbital when it's two. M sub L tells you their orientation in space. Notice that I only have one orientation for the s orbitals. That's because they're spheres. There's only one way to put them. But I have three orientations for the p orbitals because those can be on the x, y, or z axis. And if you look in your book, you can see the five different kinds of d orbitals. So again, n is the energy level, l tells you the shape, m sub l tells you how many orientations, and all of that can help us figure out which orbitals are denoted by these different quantum numbers.